Hi there, this is Saul Chiron from Saul Chiron Films and welcome to part one of my Joseph Losey season. We got there eventually um, and we're going to start... <coughs> Joseph Losey did a few short films but we're going to start with his first feature length film <coughs> The Boy with Green Hair from 1948 starring Robert Ryan, um, Pat O'Brien and Dean Stockwell. Yes, that Dean Stockwell but in this film, he's 12 years old, even although he has the same <coughs> Dean Stockwell eyebrows that we're used to and the same Dean Stockwell frown that we're used to. Um, and he gives one of the best child performances you're ever likely to see. Um, Losey never really wrote scripts for his films, but he was known as an actor's director and certainly you can see that in Dean Stockwell's performance um, it's a wonderful child performance that you obviously don't always get in films and Pat O'Brien despite the <coughs> slight Irishness of his performance um, gives some nice nuance and Robert Ryan does fine work in a perhaps limited role. This tells the story of a young boy called Peter who we see, we're introduced to in a police station. He is bald. He's 12 years old. He's being questioned by police of who he is and where he came from, which he's not really talking. And then Robert Ryan comes in, he plays a doctor, and he tries to, apparently he's an expert in boys, whatever that means, um, and he tries to get the story of how Peter ended up here, and why his odd appearance. So the film is set up in flashback, and... Um, Peter does say we'll start the story at the beginning. So I was born, and Robert Ryan's kid, do we have to start there? Um, but we get a nice passage of time. Losey uses um, yearly holidays as a kind of way of passing time. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays. Um, and we learn that Peter is a war orphan. He's kind of bounced around from place to place. And then he ends up um, staying with Pat O'Brien's character, who seems to have crazy hair of his own. Um, and he's a waiter, part-time magician, but generally a good soul. He sings songs. Um, there are a couple of songs in this film, along with the really syrupy, sickly title song. Um, there was a boy, etc, etc. Um, but everything seems to be going absolutely fine. Peter's getting friends in school. Um, and then he goes for a bath one morning and his hair turns green. Which is obviously a bit strange. Um, Pat O'Brien promised him a surprise the night before. And he thinks this is his surprise. Um, but obviously... Um, Pat O'Brien is just as surprised as the boy is. And then this leads to obviously him sticking out like a green thumb and the townspeople being a little bit unsure. You know, they're blaming the milk, so the milkman's not very happy. He's losing business. The children obviously pick on him and we get the whole kind of mob mentality and then there's this really interesting scene you know we've seen um, posters of war orphans 
um, around the world. Also, this is 1948. Um, and then um, Peter runs into the woods and he comes across the living embodiment of these orphan children from the posters. It's only remarked later that Peter thinks these are the children from the posters appear to him and say that his green hair, he can use it as a positive, he can tell people about war orphans and how war must stop. Um, obviously that worked really well. Um, so he goes around town telling everybody about war orphans and how you've got to stop war. And only at this point do the town really get upset with him and they all want him to cut his hair so he'll be normal. It's weird, obviously, this is Losi's first feature, but if you're familiar with some of Losi's work, there's a lot of themes in this that would run through his films. Um, themes of outsiders, because obviously he himself would become an outsider only a few years after making this film. So it's about outsiders, it's about being different, um, it's about victimisation, isolation, mob mentality. Um, you know, one of the kids that, there's a gang of kids who threaten to cut his hair off, you know, and one of the kids has really thick glasses, which he loses, and then he's helpless, and Peter actually gives him his glasses back. Um, you know, he promises not to hurt him when he doesn't have his glasses on, but as soon as he gets his glasses back, um, he wants to hurt Peter. So again, even though this is a kind of colourful, that is in Technicolor, um, the DV DVD print's okay, but a Blu-ray would probably really make the green hair pop. But again, it's about an outsider, which is a common theme in Losi's cinema and his life. Um, and the mob mentality of something has to be responsible, something has to take the blame. Um, and obviously the kid with the green hair is a pretty um, good target. Um, and then they do actually cut his hair off because obviously he ends up, when he's talking to Robert Ryan, um, he's bald and that scene's handled really well um, low say there's no music you know there's the kind of traditional musical score along with a few songs that Pat O'Brien sings but for the scene of um, Peter getting his head shaved and there's no music low say just does a few tight close-ups of Peter's face um, which is really effective. You know, you're reminded of the scenes of people getting their heads shaved in Full Metal Jacket. Um, and so again, it's like a fun children's film, but there's a lot of darkness in it. You know, there's a conversation that Peter overhears in the supermarket about how killing is in humans' nature. Um, you know, there's talk of, you know, Peter asks Pat O'Brien's character about the end of the world and, you know, are we doomed? Are we destined to blow each other up? Yeah, no danger of that. Um, you know, there's a couple of familiar faces in the acting, the character actors. Again, you might not know their names, but you certainly know their faces. Um, and even though, obviously, the message is fairly clear, there is a lot of nuance to the film. Um, there's a lot of little um, undercurrents that now, knowing Losi's career, um, looking back on, you can kind of see the common themes. Um, but again, it's got a really great central performance by Dean Stockwell. Um, because you have to have a good performance in the central role because um, it's the pivotal role in the film, strangely enough, um, clues in the title. But it's just a wonderful 
children's film that's not really for kids. Um, of course, it has the lesson of just because somebody's different, that doesn't make them bad. Um, obviously, Joseph McCarthy never watched this film. Um, or maybe he did, but he probably just didn't understand it. Um, he probably wanted the boy with the green hair lynched. Um, but it has lots of wonderful little things going on in it. Um, and for a first feature, it's really tight, economically shot. Um, it's only 82 minutes long, but it really goes at a brisk pace, as those old RKO films did. And again, great to see Robert Ryan. Um, again, even though he's limited, he essentially just bookends the film and interjects every now and again. Um, but it's, it's a lovely little film. That who knows, maybe one day it'll get a Blu-ray release. Um, but if you're a fan of Dean Stockwell, this is maybe where it all began. There's also an uncredited Russ Tamblin um, as well. Just for um, added um, trivia. So thanks very much for watching episode one of Joseph Losey. Um, I've kind of titled this The Three Lives of Joseph Losey. Because obviously he had his um, start in his career in America, then blacklisting, and then making films in England under a pseudonym, and then making films on the continent and Europe. Um, but this is this is where he got his start after some short films, and it's a film that's well worth checking out. It's a wonderful little film. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you'll join me for episode two of Joseph Losey. Please let me know in the comments if you've seen the boy with green hair and how would you treat him? And hopefully we'll see you again on part two. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell.